Hey, it's Joel, and I know, I know you have that problem. The problem that we all have. We finish eating our ice cream and we rinse off our ice cream spoon and we can dry it off and we can throw it back into the drawer or we can't, we, we don't because we just set it on the side of the sink and we're like, there's our wet silverware. And then it just piles up and what do we do? There's a solution to this problem and it comes in the form of an elephant. And I'm not kidding. And I'm gonna show you here on 3D Printing Nerd. As the story goes, my buddy Tariq, who goes by 3D Guy Dubai on the Twitters, he's got a YouTube channel, he's famous on the Instagram, you know the drill. He got inspired by this, this silverware strainer that someone had designed and he thought, I can make a better one. So he did, and he offered it for sale for a dollar. So I bought it. What did I do? I printed it on the Robo. That's right, my Robo R2. It's working. If you disabled the Robo auto leveling, it actually does a decent job. Look at that. Look at that elephant. There it is. It's a strainer. The idea is you rinse off your silverware, you stick it in there, and then out the spout comes the dribbles of the water. Ugh, I can't get it off the build plate. I'm gonna need some implements. Ha <laughs> ha! You need one of these. Look at that. There it is. There it is. So you can kind of get under it there. Get under it. Just wiggle it back and forth. Oh. Oh. Okay. The back legs are free. Hopefully no blood. Oh, and I got it, okay. Robo just released and announced, announced and released, whatever the correct order is, a flexible build plate for the R2. And that's why that would come in handy because I don't know if you can see on my build plate right there, it's a horror show. I've already cut it and bent it and I've had to use this thing to scrape it off. So Robo, good job on getting a build tack flex plate system for your printer. It's awesome. I would love to try it sometime. But we're not talking about that right now. We're talking about this little elephant. This little tiny elephant. And there it is. Just a tiny little elephant. A little elephant and it fits little silverwares. We should probably print this a little bit bigger. So I did. Enter the embiggening. Look at that. That is larger. In fact, it's, it's like two and a half times larger than this. This was printed in my High Five Blue on the Robo R2. Robo Cura lists normal, like the normal resolution that you print at is 0.1 millimeter layers. So this, I just put it at normal and I hit go and this took 34 hours to print, but it's gorgeous. I mean, look at it. Look at it. Look at that little, little elephant tushy. Little elephant tushy right there. Okay, so that fits. I have tools standing in as silverware. And if this was a spoon and this was a knife and this was a spork, then they would they would drain out the little nozzle right here. I've actually, you know, I've removed the supports here and it's been good, but we're a family of five. It's myself, it's my wife, it's my, my three children. Heck, we have three dogs. There's all sorts of condiment catchers and pancake flippers and other things that need to be washed and strained at the time rather than just sitting in the dishwasher until it starts. So let's go bigger. And bam, look at that. That, there's the original right on top. <laughs> it's much, much bigger and it's indestructible. This was printed on the Lulzbot Taz 6 using Matter Hacker's Build Series PLA, and it was printed with the Moore Struder. So, it's almost solid plastic. It's not solid plastic, but it's almost solid plastic. Surprising, look at that. So, supports on the Moore Struder, uh, they actually come off. I do have to convince them with tools, but once convincing happens, they do come off. And it's a little bit hairy on the inside, a little bit. Wait, we did a video on this. I know how to fix that. Oh, okay, and then I can just scrape it out. There we go, look at that. Elephant tushy, elephant tushy. Oops, you turn off now. We've got the small one. We've got the medium one. And we've got the more one the more struded largest one i can't just print this we're gonna have to test it and to test it to the kitchen you know for this tiny one it's it's not so bad and i did film a time lapse for this so let's go to the time lapse 
While I'm heading to the kitchen and while you're watching this sweet, sweet time lapse, I'd love to tell you about Puget Systems. They're a custom PC creator, builder, and solution provider here in the Seattle area. In fact, they've provided the PC that I use to produce videos, slice things, design things. It's a wonderful machine. I'm gonna be talking about it in the near future, but why don't you head over to PugetSystems.com today to customize your dream PC. There's our little elephant, right? We have some colorful silverware here. So I'll tell you what, get the spoon wet and then put it in there. It worked. It did. Although we don't see any water straining out of the elephant, do we? No. So, what if we test it out and just put some water in there? Look at that. <laughs> Look at the little elephant right there. I guess it works. It does. That's pretty good, but it only holds one spoon, one fork, one knife. We need a bigger one, don't we? Yes. Look at this. <laughs> That's bigger, isn't it? Well, I'm gonna have to adjust the camera. Look at that. It's so big it doesn't even fit in the frame of the camera. Do you want to test this one or should Sydney test this one? Sydney. So we got a slightly bigger one. This one held one spoon. I think if we put, I mean, we could maybe put a couple spoons in there, but it seems like it's not meant for many. So I think this is our one. So we'll put this one aside and now rinse off some silverware and then put it in our elephant to strainer, drainer thingy. There we go. That's a lot. Okay, let's get it in there. It seems to work. Is anything coming out? No. Oops, my bad. But look, it's coming out. Yay. Oh, look at that. That's working really well. Is that coming through on the camera? Yeah, look at that. Ta-da! <laughs> there it is, look at that. But we look at this, just in case. A bigger one. We have the biggest one possible. We need more yet. silverware. We need more silverware. Okay, now we've got probably one of the bigger elephants. And we know that if this silverware is all wet and then we put it in the elephant, it seems to work, but you have bigger things, right? Yeah. Okay, let's put them in. Here, rinse them off. That's pretty good. Okay, put them in the elephant. Look at that, it's working. Did you see that? It started dribbling out. Okay. Go ahead and turn on the water. <laughs> so is this a good solution for draining your and straining your silverware? But I have an idea. You wanna help me with that? Okay, we have to go back up to the office then. Okay, you take the silver out of this and then bring it up, okay? I think the design is great, but if water gets backed up in the trunk for some reason, maybe a food particle, maybe something else, then you need to have another hole for the water to escape. And I thought, why not drill it on the other side of the elephant? Because it just seems to make sense. That's, a, that's an escape hole. And if the water for some reason gets backed up in the trunk, then it's it's going to it's going to come out the escape hole. We should test it. So let's let's go back down to the kitchen, right, Sid? Yep. Okay. Sydney and I went upstairs and we made changes to the elephant. We made an escape hole out the back, just in case the water gets kind of plugged up here. So why don't you put the spoons and the forks and stuff in here, just to simulate having silverware in there, because we want it to be an accurate portrayal of what might happen. All right, good. And now let's put a little water in there just to see what happens. So put, yeah, just in case there's a bunch of water, bunch of water, just a whole bunch. Okay, that's enough. And look at, look at, it seems to be, seems to be working. We've got, um, we've got an elephant that's, uh, it's got an escape hole out the back in case the water's too, okay, there you go. See, look at that. Put a little bit more water in there for me, David. See the, the, uh, the nose is plugged. The nose is plugged and it's still, able to let water escape. I love it when it works. Me too. Just, it's like pouring tea. <laughs> Any more butt dribbles? No. Nope. Good job, David. Okay. Well, 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 we had a little bit of fun today. That's for sure. It's always fun getting the kids involved. They have a good time as well. Let's clean up and let's figure it out. So first we learned that disabling the robo auto leveling in the Octoprint startup G code stuffs you actually get a robo that works pretty well. More on that uh, later if you want me to. We learned of 3D Guy Dubai and his models. He's very skilled at modeling. He made this in, in no time and he offered it for a dollar on Gumroad. So I had to pick it up. It was a lot of fun. We also learned that printing models in different sizes gives you different use cases, whether it's for a single spoon, whether it's for a multiple spoons, forks and knives, or if you have a Darth Vader pancake flipper that needs to strain in the sink. Finally, we learned that models can be modified using a drill. 
and it was a lot of fun having that escape hole in the back. A big thanks for watching. I gotta clean this water up. If you like this, please subscribe and um, hit that hit that thumbs up. I don't know what to do from here, but don't forget to talk to each other more because I love you guys. As always, high five.